everyone. Book two in our series looking at the Anzacs is the book Memorial by Gary Crew and Sean Tan. And as with the previous book uh, and the band played Watson Matilda, there will be questions throughout uh, which will then be displayed on the screen after I finish reading the book for you. Memorial by Gary Crew and Sean Tan. My great grandpa says they planted the tree on the day he came home from the war. He says he stood at the crossroads and watched the ceremony. He was with the other town boys who had joined up, or what was left of them. We got chopped to bits at Ypres, he says, but, and he shrugs, and he sniffs, and he wipes his watery eyes and his grizzled cheeks. It's the sun, he says, too bright for an old fella. Then he tells me more about the tree. Now let's have a bit of a look at this page. This is a really interesting page. I want you to have a look at the illustration of the man on the left hand page. And I want you to have a look at the facial expression and I'd like you to write down what you think this man is thinking about and how you think he's feeling as he remembers friends and comrades from his time during the war. Now the next page, as you can see, there are no words. It is just an image of the root system, uh, the bottom part of the tree that's been discussed throughout the book. Now you can see that the roots are quite tall. They appear to be quite tall in comparison to a normal tree. And I'd like you to keep that in the back of your mind because as we go through, there'll be discussion about the tree and about the tree's relationship with its surroundings. And I'd like you to keep in mind those roots and what impact you think those roots could have on what the tree is surrounded by. I came home in 1918, old Pa says. There was nothing at the crossroads then, only dirt. But that day, the mayor says, I declare this place a shrine of remembrance, lest we forget. Then this boy scout, Issy Jacobs it was, died in the next war himself. Well, he steps and plays the reveille. Next come two nurses, Young Ruby Vale and your grandma. My great grandma, old pa. Ah, he says. I reckon you remember better than me, son. Old pa's funny like that. He remembers the tiny details, but forgets what you might call the big picture. Now, I'd like you to have a look at the image at the top of the page, or the set of images at the top of the page. There's a caption which I don't know if you'll be able to read that, but the caption in the bottom left hand corner of the first image says, The Crossroads 1914. 
So this is a photo of the crossroads where the tree on the previous page will eventually be planted. Have a look at what you can see in those three images, or the two and a half images that are there, and have a think about if you were going to plant a tree as a remembrance around that location, where would you plant it? Keep in mind that this is a road, this is a crossroads. Where would you plant that tree so that it's there as a remembrance, but so that it doesn't negatively impact traffic or people, so that it's not a safety hazard? Anyway, out comes Ruby and my Betty, and they pull the sheet off the statue there. The unknown soldier, old pa, I say, showing off. I know, he says. We were smart as paint in our uniforms, the five of us town boys. We took turns with the shovel until the hole was good and deep. Then, little Philly Whips wheeled himself over with his piddly Morton Bay fig tree on his lap. All done up in Hessian it was. Philly lost his legs to shrapnel but it was my Betty, your great-grandma, who planted that tree. That's something I'll never forget. So we know from this page that there is already a statue uh, of the unknown soldier as a memorial to those who died at Gallipoli, the Anzacs. But then reading through, we discover that they want to plant this tree as a memorial as well as the statue. Now, we know here now what kind of tree it is. It's a Morton Bay fig tree. Feel free to look that up when you get home if you want to find out more about what that tree looks like. And we know that a friend of Old Pa's is the one that brings the tree across. His, his name is Philly. Now, Philly's lost his legs to shrapnel. Now, you might remember from And the Band Played Waltzing Matilda that the main character, the young man in that book, also lost his legs. And I'd like you to consider again, having read this brief passage here, and what you can remember from the previous book. The impact of having lost both of your legs on your life. So it's, the book here says, Then little Philly Whips wheeled himself over with this piddly Morton Bay fig tree on his lap. So to carry something, you have to put it on your lap so that you can use your two, two arms to roll yourself. Now, we know now that we have access to electric wheelchairs and that we have good, smooth, steady, concrete footpaths, but they wouldn't have had those back then. They might have had footpaths, but they wouldn't have had electric wheelchairs. So have a think about that. The impact back then when you don't have access to electric wheelchairs 
or the electric the wheelchair scooters that you can get have not think about how your life would have changed how would you go and do the groceries how would you spend time with friends down at the beach how would you just go for a walk down the street with some friends I'd like you to write down one or two things one or two areas of your life that you think would be impacted if as a soldier you lost your legs Now the image in the foreground on the right hand page is of the statue of the unknown soldier from the, that was discussed in the previous page and it's of the digging up uh, of the hole to plant the tree. Now you've seen the picture of the tree and you've seen the picture of the statue, you've seen what the tree roots look like. I want you to make a prediction. 
write down what you think will happen in the relationship between the tree and the soldier. What impact will the tree's roots have on that statue, on that memorial? And write that down for me. It sure wasn't no piddly tree when I remember it, my grandpa says. That was around 35, when your old ma starts dragging me to the barber's shop down that way. She said I looked like a hobo. But I scooted up that tree and I wouldn't come down. Jeez, I put on a turn. She got me though. She gets a hose turned on me from the tap in the park. Then he starts scratching his shiny bald head and looking confused. I wish I had all that hair now. This is another really interesting page and there's a lot happening in the illustrations. So we can see in the middle of the page there's a tap with a hose running up to the tree and presumably in the background that's old Ma trying to hose um, the father down out of the tree when he's a little boy. But on the right hand though is six images. On the right hand side though are six images. Six images that look to be quite old. I'd like you to have a look at those six images. I'd like you to select one of them that you find particularly interesting and I'd like you to write me a paragraph telling me what's happening, who's in the picture, what they're doing, where they are and why. Why are they doing that?
You were talking about the big town tree, Pa, the one the council wants to chop down. I'm remembering that old people forget. That big town tree, well, they had the memorial service in that park when I came home too. March 46, Ma says, pouring the tea. When the ceremony was over, we had morning tea on trestle tables, all set out nice under that tree, right beside the statue of the unknown soldier. Even then, the roots were lifting the base of the statue so it had a bit of a lean on it. Not that we would have noticed that day. We used the silver tea service from the council office. Couldn't keep his hands off me, your pa couldn't. Not then, nor now. Pa gives Ma a hug. There's a lot of special memories under that tree, Audrey. Like coming home after the pictures, eh? And he gives her a bit of a pinch. Under that tree was always cool in summer, she says. A good place for a breather. Now, I'd just like to go back to the first paragraph on this page. I asked you to make predictions previously about what would happen between the tree and the statue and what the tree's roots would do to the statue. We've just found out. I'd like you to write down, if your prediction was incorrect, I'd like you to write down what did actually happen so that when you look back over your notes, you can see what's happened in the story. Now this page is again another one without words, but it's a picture of the tree, fully grown, and you can see that there are people sitting on a bench underneath it. You can see that there are some birds around it, uh, presumably pecking scraps off the ground. Have a think about how big that tree is, and have a think about the impact that that would have if that tree was planted in the middle of the crossroads that we saw at the start of the book. You know your mother and I had a treehouse up there, Dad says right out of the blue. We used to play doctors and nurses, and mothers and fathers, didn't we? Mum looks a bit worried. Dad can come out with anything sometimes. You and your mothers and fathers, she says, biffing him. And you were always trying to get me up there to look at the stars. Or so you said. But the kids don't play there anymore. There's not even any grass. The park's all covered with bitumen now. Last time I remember seeing grass there was in 72, at the memorial service when you came back from Vietnam. Were you in Vietnam, Dad? There's some things you don't want to remember, son. This is a really interesting page. We've got some discussion here between the boy and his parents, and they're talking about their memories of the tree. Now, 
It talks about the last time that there was grass around that tree was back in 1972 when there was a Vietnam memorial service, which is when the boy's father came back. Now, this sounds like it's something that the boy wasn't aware of. The boy didn't know that his father served in the Vietnam War. And he naturally is curious about that and wanting to know some more. But his father's response is quite interesting. His father says, there's some things you don't want to remember, son. Why would he not want to talk about his experiences with his son? You might want to have a think about what you remember from reading and the band played Waltz in Matilda and listening to that song as well. And the things that I asked you to have a look at and have a think about, when we got to the page where they were talking about having lost legs and arms and soldiers being insane, you might want to have a look back at what you wrote down there because that may be relevant here. And there's my question. I'd like you to have a think about why wouldn't the father want to share his experiences in Vietnam with his son? But speaking of that tree, I can't work out how it stays alive with all those exhaust fumes from the intersection. And I know the council's been planning to get rid of it since the 50s. It's the statue or the tree. One has to go, they reckon. The council's been saying that since they put the traffic lights in, Pa says, since they spread the bitumen, old Pa corrects him. But the tree's a memorial, I say. The same as the statue, except the tree's alive and the statue's just rock and concrete. And the tree's all full of birds and fruit bats and possums. Whole families like ours. The council cut, wouldn't cut that big tree down, would they, old pa? Now this is another really interesting page. You can see in the image, uh, in the foreground, we can see the tree trunk. But through the V of the branches of the tree, we can see the traffic and the buildings that have built up over time behind the tree. This page is talking about that. It's talking about the relationship and the effect that this tree has on its surroundings and the effect that the surroundings have on the tree. Now there's a very good question there. How does the tree stay alive with all of the exhaust fumes? I'd like you to have a think about that one and see if you can come up with a couple of sentences uh, to answer that question.
And then a second question for this page, I want you to have a look at the last paragraph. What do you think? Will the council cut it down or will they leave it? And why will they make that decision? It's a traffic hazard, they say. It's lifting the bitumen, they say. It drops seeds on cars, they say. It obscures the traffic lights, they say. It's knocking the statue over, they say. Then I'll fight the council, I say. Because the trees are memorial too. They have to see that. A living memorial. But old Pa laughs. They'll beat you, son, he says. The big boys will beat you every time. They'll chop you to bits. Now this page is quite an empty page. We can see that the statue of the fallen soldier, and note that it's on a bit of a lane that has been mentioned in the book. We can also see what looks like leaves flying through the air, scattered by a gust of wind maybe. Make a prediction. Do you think the council cut the tree down and the leaves flying in the wind are all that is left?
Then he smiles and st says, still, that don't mean they'll forget you. It's the fight in you they'll remember. That memory won't die, not like my old bones. Even concrete and rock won't last forever. But memories, now they're different. Memories, they're ever living things. Like you say, my son, like our tree. And now that I think about it, I know what he said is true. Now this is the last page of the book, and you might notice that there's something missing. Have a look at the image, and write down what you think that is. What is it that's missing? Now, I'd also like you to have a think about, what's the message in this book? We, it, the book talks about a tree, and about people's memories of a tree over time. But what do you think the author is trying to say? Do you think it's just about a tree? Or do you think there's something a little bit deeper going on here? Do you think the author is trying to say something else? I'd like you to write me a paragraph. Tell me what you think the author is trying to tell us. What is the message? And why is the author used a tree?